Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Hey guys, Jules here. Got another video for you. This is a Sabbath message. Um, God said that you're going to be a white castle. Let me see if I get it out of the way there so you can see that. You're going to be a white castle. Amen. What does that mean? You're going to be righteous and you're going to be like a fortress. That's what it means. That's what it means. Let me get in. Let me get into this message. Father God, I give you all the glory for dreams, visions, words of knowledge. Thank you, Father God, for your word that you've been sharing with me all week. And I'm going to put it out here today. Thank you, Father God. I ask that you take this message to those that need to hear it and see it. And Father God, I, I bind every evil tongue that would come against your word, the ministry. We we cut out the flickering tongues, the accuser of the brothers. Uh, we just we cut them out right now in the name of Jesus. We send them back to the pit where they belong with a double-edged sword. Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, hope you guys are doing well. Tonight at sundown, today is October 14th. Tonight at sundown is the start of a new year. That is in accordance with God's creation calendar. This is what God has shown us through visions and dreams. Jesus came to us. I've been talking to you guys about this. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, so, so yeah, it's um, Rosh Hashanah. Also, Rosh Hashanah is also the same as the Feast of Trumpets blow the trumpets. I, I kind of feel like the trumpets are going to be blowing very soon. Um, I've been talking to you guys. The Lord told me the title of this message is the new young church will be like a white castle, like a white castle. Okay. Um, that is a righteous and strong fortress. That's what that is. So sh Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters tonight. This is, this is airing on the new moon feast, which I consider kind of a fa uh, a Sabbath. Um, as well. So um, God bless you guys. I hope you're doing well. We, the team, the team is in rural Kentucky, directed by the Lord. We are standing by for whatever direction he has for us. And um, he's telling me that you know, I'm going to share a couple messages tonight with you. Um, uh, let's see, all scriptures will be placed into the description box, of course. Um, so Today is the first day of the first month of the new year. So mark your calendars. Um, this video is published on the evening of October 14th, 2023. And so really, you know, most people observe the 15th of October, which will be really the first day of the new year. Um, that's the way I see it. It's actually sundown to sundown. That's that's the way God explains it um, to Enoch. So, so. Rosh Hashanah, sundown October 14th to sundown October 15th. Start of the Feast of Trumpets, the new moon, new moon Feast Day. What is that? New Moon Feast Day is um, where all those that have been lost, that have been saved, are welcomed back into the kingdom of God. There's a celebration in, in heaven. That's what the Lord has told us. Um, now, um, there's the Day of Atonement. This is coming on the 10th day of the first month. And um, uh, the 10th day to the 15th day of the first month, Feast of Tabernacles starting first day of harvest season. And this is the Feast of Tabernacles goes um, from, I think, the 15th of the first month and to the 21st day of the first month, followed by a Sabbath. Yes. The Lord has told us in messages uh, that men have changed the dates and times, calendars, even lied about what is written in the books of the Bible. And I, you know, the Lord has put this in my heart to, to push it. I, you know, tomorrow is the new year is the new day. Um, so to today, uh, tonight, starting tonight, sundown is a new moon feast, Rosh Hashanah and feast of trumpets. Okay. Enough on that. I think so. Um, so the new year is mentioned in Ezekiel 41. You can check it out to yourself. Check that out. And just Yom Teror in Hebrew. Um, Yom Tor in Hebrew. And um, remember Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 says, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. And that would be tomorrow. Actually, it falls on a Sunday. Now, the Gregorian uh, calendar and all the days of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they're, they're all named after pagan gods. I don't know if you knew that. So, hey, all my, all my new subscribers, God bless you. Um, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. It's a double blessing. 
um, you know, remember that God's word is a ministering angel. So check it out in the description box. Use it as a guy uh, as a study, study, study guide if you want. I have plenty, plenty of study guides if you want. Read the whole chapter though. Read the whole chapter. Um, who is open eyes of heart? For this is all for the new new subscribers we are an end times ministry made up of five brothers and six sisters um and actually six and um so we we are uh we have actually two uh people on the on the external prayer team and um we travel around in rvs and i have an old bus that the lord told me to go get and um he told me to surrender my life so, and that's what we have done. We have surrendered our life to Jesus and we go wherever Jesus tells us or wherever God tells the Holy Spirit directs our every path. Um, we, we, the Lord has given us a, a, a map, a roadmap, I guess you'll call it. And the Lord is saying, push it, pray daily, worship daily, commune with God in his word daily and fast weekly. So there's four major things that you need to do. And that's taking up your cross. When you do these things, you're taking up your cross. And that's being in relationship with Jesus. Why? So that we can become sons and daughters of God. And that's what his word says. So God brought us together, this team, together over 18 months ago, end times and last days. And for the first half of the tribulation, not the great tribulation, the Lord is telling us this is a great consummate of time. And so um, now uh, we host a fast. Every week, Monday through Wednesday, you come off the fast on Thursday morning. You're drinking only water. This is nothing more than an Esther fast. Now, in Esther, the books, of, the book of Esther, they do it without water. But the Lord told me it's okay to do it with water. It's divine fullness for your heart. And it's a great way to get cleansed. Cleansed from what? Cleansed from, uh, cleansed from demonic spirits. Cleansed from addictions. Cleansed so that your garments are made white and clean so that you are one of the five virgins that get to meet Jesus when the rapture happens, brothers and sisters. It's still not too late. Still not too late. I want to say a special thank you. Man, I don't know what we do without you guys. Those that continue to support us, thank you very much. Praise God for you. You we pray, we pray for you. We thank you very much for for taking care of us. And I know I know that God has put that in your heart. Because I see it. And God has showed me that. Thank you. So we are messengers in the last days. We're led and taught by the Holy Spirit. And what I'm sharing with you today was given to me by the Holy Spirit during Bible study. The Lord said this scripture. And wait till you see how it lines up. I've not, I've not manipulated it. The Lord has, has uh, provided it to me. And it actually tells a story. So I just want you to, you know, let, let God's word speak to you. Because let me tell you something. I'm nobody. I am nothing without God. And my uh, I, I'm 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 I don't have anything interesting uh, to tell you, but I will tell you that the Lord has given me two messages this morning that I'm sharing today, and also the Bible scriptures. The Lord told me to read these and it tells a story. So follow along with me, okay? In your Bibles, get your Bibles, put me on pause if you need to, grab your Bibles. So I'm going to start off with 1 Corinthians 2, 14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God. So, and it's foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And this is the, what the Lord has told me to share with you, that those religious spirits out there and, and th those people that have religious spirits in them, they, they don't look at this as they don't believe that the Holy Spirit can guide you. You're getting ready to find out very soon that the Holy Spirit will guide you. In 1 John 2, 27, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true, it is not a lie. And just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. Who is him? That is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus' spirit. And, and, and the Father God, Holy Spirit, guide you and so in john john chapter 12 verse 30 through 40 um, and, and again these scriptures were given to me by the holy spirit so let them li just hear open your ears listen listen verse 38 john chapter 12 verse 38 through 40 
that the word of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spoke. The Lord who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe because Isaiah, Isaiah said again, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. See, open your eyes, open your ears, open your hearts to the word of God. And that's what I'm sharing. I'm not sharing my words. I'm sharing God's word. In John chapter 12, verses 49 through 50, it says, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command that I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, I, so I speak. Isaiah chapter 2, verses 20 through 21. In that day, a man will cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each for himself to worship to the moles and bats, to, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the crags, the rugged rocks from the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty. When he arises to shake the earth mightily. What, what idols? What idols? Many of you have idols. They may, they may look different than silver than gold. But the things that you're spending most of your time with is your idol. And God is saying you're getting ready to cast those away. You're getting ready to cast those away. In Daniel chapter 12 verse 10 it says, Many shall be purified, made white, and refined. But the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 41 through 42, it says, If I wet my glittering sword and my hand takes hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and repay those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh, which the blood of the slain and the captives from the heads of the leaders of the enemy. In Revelation chapter 3, verses 10 through 11, it says, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast that you have what you have, that you that no one may take your crown. Sorry about that. In Revelation chapter 3, verses 18, it says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Guys, here's a message given to me this morning, 1014, verse uh, 2023. It says, my son, and, and I want you to know, the Lord has told me to read everything. So I'm reading it. I'm just being obedient. My son, you are standing your ground, living by faith. You are perceiving that it is increasing and getting stronger for the church. You are on spiritual ground with limitations. There will be a Christ opportunity for hearts to turn to Jesus. My son, receive in your heart obedience and understanding that you have the power within the ministry to help bring people to say salvation and redemption. And my son, the prophetic office will be experienced, will experience a turnaround in the situation concerning those caught up in legalism. Legalism, that is those with a righteous spirit, with, uh, with religious spirits. My son, you will be moving in a righteous direction in the future. You are seeing the young church who is having youth renewed like an eagle. The young church will be righteous and solid as a fortress after redemption, they will be a white castle. The young church is increasing and becoming stronger with an anointing, and they will have God's glory for those who are marred and unwanted and close to death. The young church said, how do you like my new uniform? So in, in, my, in my dream, this, this church was speaking to me and said, how do you like my new uniform? Then it goes on. The young church will have a new level of glory of God and be the recognized authority. The young church will be a cheerful heart. This is prophetic insight, my son. You will be opening one heart, showing affection and affect and accept the church as your own, my son. End of message. Guys, real quick, 
This is this is Ephesians chapter 14. I've shared this with you many times. New church rising. God is taking those that are listening, that that are that have eyes to see and ears to hear. That's why he's, he's talking about so much in this message that those people are the new young church. Those are the people that are rising up. Religious spirits, they, those are the ones who are not going to rise up. You will go through judgment. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 26, it says, Therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. But Jesus said to, to him, Put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. That is for someone. In Mark chapter 4, verse 17, they and they have no roots in themselves and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the wor wor word's sake, immediately they stumble. In Romans chapter 13, verse 14, it says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. And in Revelation 16, 15, it says, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. In 1 Samuel Chapter 26, verse 24. Indeed, and indeed, I, as, as your life was valued much this day in my eyes, so let my life be valued much in the eyes of the Lord and let him deliver me out of the tribulation. Here's another message that was given to me this morning. Um, given, given on 10, 14, 20, 20. He says, my, my son, you're walking by faith, having humbled, having been humbled on the narrow path. And have honor with Christ. My son, you will be carefree and casual in the very near future. Praise God. Hallelujah. My son, soon you will acknowledge and make your focus turning to the lost and those caught up in legalism. That's religious spirits. He speaks again about it. You are heading in a righteous direction with strength as you are ready for harvest. And there will be witnessing opportunities in the very near future so hearts can turn to Jesus. And that is the end of that message. Now I want to take you to Matthew chapter 13, verses 43 through 46. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The Holy Spirit says it again. And the parable of the hidden treasure, verse 44 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. That is speaking of buying back your salvation. That is speaking about surrendering everything so that you can so that you can recover a hundredfold of a blessing. In the parable of the pearl of great price in verse 45 and 46, it says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Guys, are you willing to, to spend everything you've got on, on heaven? Are you ready to invest everything you've got? I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your heart. Are you ready to give up all your idols? I'm talking about are you ready to give up everything for Jesus? Because that is going to get you into heaven, brothers and sisters. And, and, and that's, a sure, that's a sure ticket in, right? But, but there's another way. Jesus is a free, a, free, a free salvation ticket to get into heaven. He is free. And if you've never accepted Jesus, all you have to do is simply confess your sins, turn 180 from your sins, and that is repentance, and go the opposite way. And confess everything you've ever done you know will you confess your sins today will you seek jesus for healing and will you get on your knees and ask for forgiveness will you do this will you fast weekly will you pray today will you worship today will you will you uh commune with jesus and his word that is luke 9 23 jesus says it's a daily commitment to take up your cross and to Worship Jesus. Guys, I know this is fast and furious. I love you very much. Um, seek Jesus. It's still not too late. Time is running out. You know that. God bless you guys. And you know it. This is Jules out. God bless you. Holy
Open the eyes of my heart. Oh. 